All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies course, I've been doing a series of video presentations that are based on the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development series. I'm into the JavaScript frameworks and we're looking at React. All right, and this will be the React to-do list that we're going to do. So just so you see this, I want to make sure that you've seen it. We're now right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven components here, and we're on number two. All right. So it says, let's say we've been tasked with creating a proof of concept in React, an app that allows users to add, edit, and delete tasks they want to work on, and also mark tasks as complete without deleting them. This article will walk you through putting the basic app component structure and styling in place. All right ready for individual component definition and interactivity, which will be added later. So the first thing they're going to do is put in a user story. And as mentioned here, a user story is an actionable goal from the perspective of the user. Defining user stories before we begin will allow us to help set up our focus correctly. Our app should fulfill the following. As a user, I can read all of my tasks. I can add a new task. I can mark a task as completed, I can delete a task, I can edit a task, and I can view a specific subset of tasks. All right. It says we'll tackle these stories one by one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six things. First is some housekeeping. It says Create React App has made a few files we won't be using at all in our project. We're not going to write per component style sheets. So first we'll delete the app.css from the top of our app.js file. So let's bring in our app.js file. And even if we screw up, we can, we can easily recreate this. It really and truly shouldn't be a problem. So we won't need these. Boom, they're gone. Now, next it says we should CD into our source and delete some files. And then move back up to where we were. Now, I don't think we have the service worker anymore, but let's take a quick look. In fact, let's do it like this. I'll do it, you know, this may not be the, the re recommended way of doing it, but it's the way I'm going to do it. So. I just want it to be visual for you. So we want to go to our source folder. And actually, this is the one I want to really make smaller. So and let's make this wider. There we go. So in our source folder here, it says we want to remove a few files. We don't need app test. We don't need app.css. We don't need the logo.svg, and we don't need the setup tests, and it says we don't need the service worker, which I believe for us now is the report vitals. So I'm going to remove all those by just highlighting all of them and hitting delete, which leaves us with these three files, our app.js, our index.css, and our uh, index.js says two of the files we're deleting are for testing the application. We will not cover testing here. If you stopped your server to do these tasks, you'll have to restart it again using npm start. Now, I didn't stop it, which I really should have done, because now I might be getting error messages. We'll see. See, I'm, I'm using stuff that isn't in here anymore. The logo is not in there, etc. <clears throat> but I should be able to come in here. Go back into here, and as I've been doing, do a control break, and then start NPM again. Now, I don't get any errors, but notice I don't get any of the other stuff I had in here either. It says, cannot resolve the report vitals that's in our source. So let's see. That must be in our index file, so we can remove that as well. All right. 
right? And that's this one right here. Should be able to just comment that out. Let's let's see if that fixed it. I have no idea if it did or not. All right, now it says logo is undefined. So you can see the perpetual problem here. So first of all, let's we won't need this, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. All right, now we do need the app. We do need the index.css. We should need all this stuff, and I should also be able to get rid of this. Again, as they say, it's some housekeeping. I'm cleaning some stuff up. We don't need this image line in here anymore because we no longer have the logo. <clears throat> All right, did that fix everything? There. Hello, Jeffrey P. Scott. Well, you can see now it looks terrible. All right. We're going to fix it up in just a moment or start fixing it up. All right. Copy the following snippet to your clipboard and paste it into the app.js so that it replaces the current app function. Now that's a big function that's in there. All right, so we're gonna we'll do this first. So again, we want to put this into app.js and replace our current app function. There's app.js and here's our current app function. All right, a lot bigger than it was before. It's now almost 100 lines. And a lot of the stuff that's in here should actually make sense. Notice we've got an H1 tag in here, for example. Here's a form. All right. But I'm just going to follow their lead on this. So now open this and change, open the index.html and change the title to todomatic. I don't want the CSS. Oh, that's up here. It's in public. So let's change the title in here. Where it was set from React app to to do Matic. And let's make sure that indeed it changed it here. Import and export may only appear at the top level. Like that. Somehow it look, looks like I lost a curly brace. And there we go. There's our to-do task as it currently stands. So let's look at it. First of all, can we add something? Uh, eat, sleep, repeat. Um, say hello. No. Can we show all tasks? We are. Can we show all active tasks? We show all completed tests. None of that's been been put in here yet. That's just fine. All right, it's ugly and it doesn't function yet, but that's okay. We'll style it in a moment. First, consider the JSX we have and how it corresponds to our user stories. We have a form element with an input type equal text for writing out a new task right here. We have an array of buttons that will be used to filter our tasks, which is right here. We have a heading that tells us how many tasks remain, which is right here. We have our three tasks arranged in an unordered list, which are right here. Each task is a list item and has buttons to edit and delete and a checkbox to check off when it's done. The form will allow us to make tasks. The buttons will filter them. 
the heading and list are ways to read them, okay? You may notice some unusual attributes here. For example, they mention here, ARIA pressed equal true. And as it says, it tells an assistive technology such as screen readers that the button can be in one of two states, pressed or unpressed. Setting the value true means the button is pressed by default. The next class that's in there, the visually hidden, has no effect because we've not yet included any CSS. Once we put our styles in place, any element with this class will be hidden from sighted users and still available to screen users. This is because these words are not needed by sighted users. Further down, you can find our UL element, which has a role attribute in it. The role attribute, which we talked about in an earlier lecture, helps assistive technology explain what kind of element the tag represents. A UL is treated like a list by default, but the styles we're about to add will break that functionality. This rule will restore the list meaning of the UL element. The labeled by tells assistive technologies that we're using our list heading as the label that describes the purpose of the list beneath it. Making this association gives the list a more informative context, again, to help people with screen reader, screen readers or any other type of assistive technology that needs it. Finally, the labels and the inputs in our list items have some attributes unique to FSX, such as the default check, which we've already talked about. It tells React to check this checkbox initially. If we were to have used checked as we would in regular HTML, React would log warnings into the browser console. We want to avoid that. It says, don't worry too much about this for now. It'll become more important later. The HTML4 attribute corresponds to the for attribute used in HTML. We cannot use for as an attribute in JSXX, JSX, because it is a reserved word. So you use HTML4 instead. If you use the word for, it would think you were writing a for loop in regular JavaScript. All right. To use Boolean values, true and false, and JSX attributes, you must enclose them in curly braces. You saw that right here. If you just write default checked equals true, the value will be true, the string literal, not true, the Boolean value. It says this is actually JavaScript and not HTML. The ARIA, ARIA pressed attribute used in the earlier code snippet was set to true because it is not a, a true Boolean attrib attribute in the way checked is. All right, paste the following code into our index.css styles to replace what is currently there. Quite a bit. In fact, this will be the rest of this particular part of the React tutorial that we're going through. All right, so let's immediately jump back into here and you'll notice we don't even have to refresh it looks a little bit nicer all right i don't think we've got the functionality in here yet mow the lawn i don't think that's in here yet see that'll have to come down here and it'll have or probably at the top and it'll be four tasks all active completed those are not done either but it looks a heck of a lot nicer than it did previously all right now our to-do list app actually looks more like a real app. The problem is it doesn't do anything. We'll start doing that in the next chapter. So we'll start, as it says, component componentizing our React app. So we've gotten done the getting started and the beginning our React to-do list. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got the first two portions of this done, and we'll go into this part in our next lecture.